Suffering for years, Kratos, the once great general, now known as the ghost of Sparta, had pledged himself as a champion to the gods of Olympus. In return, he hoped only to rid himself of the nightmares that haunted him for far too long. But for now, his only respite, his only relief from the sins of his past, was found in the heat of battle. And on this day, Kratos had been called upon by the gods to confront an unthinkable evil, unleashed on the city of Attica by the invading Persian army. City Persian. Evil? It is not evil that I bring, Spartan. I bring the might of Persia and the sacrament of purification. As we speak, my basilisk cleanses this land so that it may embrace the glory of the Persian Empire. Olympus has sent a message, and I am here to deliver it. <laughs> then you are just a messenger. So take this message back to your little gods. It will take more than a pathetic Spartan to stop the power of the Empire. Please. Please, spare my life, and I will give you all that you ask. You have nothing I want, Persian. Take my kingdom, my women, my gold. I won't take your riches, but I will take your life. Fulfilling his commitment to the gods, Kratos defeated the basilisk brought forth by the Persians. But this small victory would not satisfy the man who had come to be known as the Ghost of Sparta. Is this all you would have me do? Is there nothing else? through the sky and the world plunge into darkness, Kratos knew this was not a sign from the gods. What treachery is this? Setting his sights on the glowing horizon, Kratos made his way toward the mysterious light. But there was more afoot than Kratos could possibly know. darkness, 
Morpheus, the god of dreams, awakened to a world where he and only he wielded power. The land was slowly overrun by a black fog that engulfed everything it touched. The power of Morpheus affected even Kratos as he was haunted by a strange man. And as Kratos approached the temple, it became clear that the task ahead was more than he could have ever imagined. Once again, the strange, lingering melody could be heard through the black fog of Morpheus, haunting Kratos. which Kratos stood was the sun chariot of Helios, the very chariot that the fire steeds pulled across the sky every day, allowing the brilliance of Helios to shine down on all mankind. Kratos. Athena, what madness has befallen us? Kratos, there is not much time. Olympus needs you. I grow tired of the gods' request, Athena. I have given enough. Now take these nightmares from my head! It is not for you to say when your servitude ends. You will earn your freedom in time. But for now, Olympus needs your unquestioning obedience. The God of the Sun has been torn from the sky. This temple on which you stand is the Chariot of Helios. Without their master to reign them, the fire steeds have driven the sunshine into the earth. And without Helios, there is no one to keep Morpheus from seizing permanent power. Many of the gods have fallen into a deep slumber. Soon, all will succumb to the black grip of Morpheus. What would you have me do? You must find Helios and return him to the sky. Lest the world of gods and men be lost forever. Only his light can release the grasp of Morpheus. Athena! Athena! I am grateful you have come, Ghost of Sparta. The Titan Atlas has been freed from the pits of Tartarus and has taken my brother Helios from his rightful place in the sky. What does Atlas want with the Sun God? Helios holds within him the power of the Sun, a power so great it can destroy the world. It cannot be trusted in the hands of a Titan. Please, take the Sun Shield from his throne. Walk through the gates of Olympus, and you will find me. Hurry, Kratos. Even now, my brother suffers at the hand of Atlas. As Kratos stepped out into the eternal night, much had changed outside the temple. Morpheus grew ever stronger, as his harbingers and darkness continued to prevent the smart. As Kratos entered the cave, Eos, goddess of dawn and sister to Helios, sat above him, visibly weakened by the absence of the sun. All glory be to Lord Zeus for granting you safe passage to me. The king of the gods does not aid me, Eos. I am but a slave to Zeus and Olympus. Save my brother, Kratos and he will convince Zeus to release you and rid you of the horrors of your past. I give you my word. The gods have broken their word to me many times. Forgive me if I find it hard to believe your promises. Be that as it may, Kratos. The primordial fire is almost out. Without Helios, 
The life-giving light of the world cannot be sustained. If you do not find him, only darkness and death awaits all of us. Where has Atlas taken him? I do not know, Kratos. Follow the passage out of the cave. Retrieve the fire and it will light your path to the remaining steeds. They will guide you to their master. They will take you to my brother. May you go with the speed of Hermes, Ghost of Sparta. As Kratos left the temple, he was assaulted by the army of Morpheus, and again, he heard the haunting melody. But this time, he recognized it as the song of his daughter, Calliope. Calliope? My daughter, where are you? Calliope! With the release of the fire steeds, Kratos was now in the hands of the beasts. And where they would take him, he did not know. As the steeds pulled Kratos away from the grip of Morpheus, they crossed into the underworld. But in the land of the dead, they could go no further, for these beings of light were not welcome in Hades. Kratos found himself on the very edge of Hades, the land where no mortal had set foot. Here, where the souls of the dead walk their fated path, Kratos knew that for him, this was merely the beginning.
I am a slave to no one, Charon. We share a common fate, Kratos. The gods will release neither of us from our torture. Be gone. It is not yet your time, mortal. Here, where the souls of the wicked are tortured in the pits of Tartarus, the wailing and the agony of the damned resonated deep throughout the bowels of the underworld. Kratos saw before him the remnants of the old rulers of Earth, the mighty Titans. Defeated by the gods and enchained in the depths of Tartarus, they suffered their unjust penance. And for their torment, it was well known that these immortal beings hated the Olympians with immeasurable fury. By the hands of Zeus, the Titans had been bound and shackled in their torment for a thousand years, with no hope of escape. Now the chains that once held the Titan Atlas lay broken, and only one question plagued the thoughts of Kratos. Who will release such evil? You again. The walls of Tartarus would not hold Atlas, and they would not hold me either. The gods have obviously taken pity on their slaves. You underestimate me, Charon. This time, I will not be so merciful! Having defeated Charon, Kratos journeyed deeper into Hades and closer to his goal. For in the distance, the bright light of Helios illuminated all of the underworld. But something on the shore caught his attention. And to Kratos, it almost seemed an apparition. Calliope! Upon seeing his daughter, Kratos realized that all that he had been working for, all that he had wanted, was within reach. Years of service to the gods had not delivered him from his pain. Never had it eased the burden of his past. And now, Calliope was found. Calliope! Calliope, where are you? Kratos looked, but his daughter was nowhere to be seen. In the middle of the room sat a graceful figure, a figure he recognized all too well. Persephone, wife of Hades, and queen of the undead. Where is my daughter, witch? Choose your words carefully, ghost of Sparta. You address the goddess of the underworld. Your daughter is well. She lives among the pure souls in the Elysian fields. Lead me to her! Have you forgotten, Kratos? The Olympians need you. They slumber at the hand of Morpheus. I have faithfully served the gods, yet they do not give me what I ask. I grow weary of their demands. The gods on Olympus failed me too, Kratos. I was betrayed by Zeus and tricked by my husband, Hades. Now I am to stay in the underworld as queen of the dead, to serve the fallen and care for them as my own children. 
Persephone, I demand to see my daughter. As you wish. If Calliope is your true desire, I can help you. But be warned, Ghost of Sparta. The world of man will suffer because of your choice. I care little for the world and its suffering. Where is she? If you are to see your daughter again, you must become worthy of Elysium. Cast your weapons at the Forsaken Tree, and let it release the evils of your past. Only then will you be free of your sins, and be granted passage through the Divine Gates. the portal. Calliope! Father? My child. Oh. Why did you go? I am here now, child. And I will not leave you again. I have watched over you pathetic mortals for a thousand years, and it is always the same. Serving yourself before the needs of others has always been your flaw. But no matter, for now you serve my purpose. It is time for all that came before to end. The Titan will fulfill his role and finish what I have started. I released Atlas. You? As you were pathetically disarming yourself, Atlas completed the task I set him out to do. With the power of the sun in his hands, it is only a matter of time before he destroys the pillar that holds the world. And Olympus with it. But why? Do you think it was my choice to wed a man I did not love? Live a life I did not choose? I was betrayed by the very gods that once saw me as their own. But no more. Once the pillar is destroyed, the world will revert into chaos. And what is to become of you? I will have my peace, and be free from this miserable existence. I will perish, but it is my choice. Father, what's happening? I'm scared. In your selfish choice to be with your daughter, you have caused her ruin. No. Elysium falls too, Kratos. She will perish. No! I will not let the gods take her from me again! Father! The choice was clear to him, yet impossible to make. To stay with his daughter meant the end of the world and the end of her. To stop Persephone and Atlas would mean forsaking his daughter forever while his hatred and anger for the gods grew ever stronger. He knew there was but one thing to do. Father, please! <laughs> please! Kratos soon realized that what he gained in humanity, he lost in power. He would need to become the monster he has once if he was to defeat Persephone. He would need to become the ghost of Sparta once again if he was to save his child. Ah! He would need to sacrifice his 
Kratos knew his destiny was not with Calliope. The fates were never that kind. Spartan, witness the end. Leave this world behind. Atlas! is now clear to me. I will serve them, and they will keep their promise to free me from my past. I ask you, Spartan, what good is the promise of an Olympian? It is all I have, Atlas! We will meet again, Spartan. The fates have deemed it. One day, you will regret what you have done here. The mighty Atlas was left in chamber, cursed to forever hold the world on his shoulders. Greater penance than even Zeus himself had placed on the Titans. The fate of Atlas had been sealed, and the goddess Persephone was no more. Kratos had saved mankind, but that mattered little to him. By forsaking his daughter, he had abandoned the only person he ever cared for. What he had long sought and finally found was now forever lost. As the sun chariot rose higher in the sky, and the might of Helios shone once again on the world. Morpheus retreated to the shadows. Kratos gained little satisfaction from his victory. With years of servitude in front of him, he would need to confront his past and fight to reclaim the humanity he lost on the day his dark legend was born. The dire toll of his relentless battles finally caught up with him as Kratos fell from the chariot 
to the earth. Was this sacrifice too much for one to bear? Even for the man who was known as the ghost of Sparta. He has again served us well, Athena. He is a remarkable mortal. He is weak. Shall we help him? He'll live. They must. 